twisters. They're beyond any doubt the most violent storms on the planet. They represent Mother Nature in her most terrifying and humbling form. They're capable of both unbelievable feats of power and unimaginable acts of destruction. Come with us now as we explore this most awe-inspiring weather phenomenon. Hello, I'm Jim Giles, Chief Meteorologist at KOTV in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Forecasting weather here in the very heart of Tornado Alley has provided me many opportunities over the years to observe and to report on the most fascinating weather. I'll be your host during this program as we learn more about twisters and the people who study, predict, and yes, even chase them. Whether called twisters, cyclones, or tornado, this violently rotating column of air is Mother Nature's most ferocious form of expression and produces the strongest of all surface winds. Based upon scientific analysis of storm damage, tornadic winds have been estimated in excess of 300 miles per hour. On April 26, 1991, OU professor Howie Bluestein, using Doppler radar, actually documented winds of 287 miles per hour in a twister north of Red Rock in north central Oklahoma. This is the strongest near ground wind ever recorded on the planet. On average, about 1,000 tornadoes are reported every year in the United States, more than anywhere else in the world. Twisters can, however, strike all over the globe. They've been reported as far north as Stockholm, Sweden, and St. Petersburg, Russia. Tornadoes are known to quite frequently occur in Italy, the United Kingdom, and even in the land down under. However, twisters in Australia would spin clockwise, the direct opposite of the counterclockwise rotation of most tornadoes in the Northern Hemisphere. Far and away, the United States has the greatest incidence of tornadoes, especially the severe variety with winds in excess of 200 miles per hour. Dr. Theodore Fujita decided that he could rank tornadoes based upon a scale that he devised. It's called the Fujita, or F scale. It runs from F0 to F6. A trained meteorologist can go to a tornado scene and by examining what was damaged and how severely and how the damaged debris is scattered, can actually determine the strength of the tornadic winds. Most tornadoes are F0 or F1. They have winds of roughly 100 miles per hour or less. Only 2% of all tornadoes have winds greater than 200 miles per hour, yet they cause 70% of the fatalities as a result of tornadoes. F6 tornadoes have never been observed. They're considered inconceivable. Tornadoes occur most frequently in Tornado Alley, an area roughly three to 500 miles wide that runs from Texas to Iowa. Texas records the greatest number of twisters, about 126 per year, Oklahoma second with 52 per year. When you look at tornadoes per square mile, however, Texas ranks ninth, far behind Florida, Oklahoma, and Indiana. Oklahoma, smack in the middle of Tornado Alley, is number one in the world in the total number of significant and violent tornadoes. Twisters steered by upper level winds travel primarily from southwest to northeast. However, exceptions have been reported. The Vortex operation, part of the National Severe Storms Laboratory based in Norman, Oklahoma, tracked a tornado on May 29, 1994 near Archer, Texas, with winds close to 200 miles per hour. This twister first tracked west, then moved northeast, and then northwest. Twisters have been reported in all 50 states, including Alaska and Hawaii, and have been recorded during every month of the year. The height of activity occurs in the spring from April through June and is at a minimum in December and January. Tornadoes appear most frequently during the late afternoon or early evening, namely at or shortly after the hottest time of day when the atmosphere is most unstable. Tornadoes are the result of extreme atmospheric instability with cold air aloft and warm moist air near the ground. The atmosphere literally wants to turn over. The cold air wants to sink and the warm air wants to rise. Now thunderstorms, even tornadoes, are Mother Nature's way of neutralizing this instability, a way of rapidly bringing the atmosphere into balance. Powerful thunderstorm updrafts pull air into the storm from miles around, and if the three-dimensional atmospheric wind flow is such that air begins to rotate as it's pulled into the updraft, that gentle rotation will be greatly magnified as it nears the center of rotation. It's like an ice skater starting to spin with arms outstretched. And as the arms are drawn closer to the body, the skater spins faster. 
Once the thunderstorm starts to spin, the updraft strength increases dramatically. The storm suddenly becomes more violent, capable of larger hail, stronger straight line winds, and possibly produce a tornado. Uh, tornadoes do not form from the ground up. They form from the cloud down. Storm rotation is at a maximum well above the ground, possibly at 20,000 feet or so. As this rotation extends earthward and becomes visible below the cloud base, it appears as what we call the wall cloud. Now this collar of rotation often protrudes from the flat lowered rain-free cloud base southwest of the heavy rain. A frontal cloud is a narrow extension of the rotation below the wall cloud. A tornado is a funnel that reaches the ground. Not all rotating thunderstorms with visible wall clouds produce tornadoes, but virtually all major tornadoes are a product of rotating thunderstorms. Tornadoes generally exhibit a certain characteristic cycle of behavior between formation and final disappearance. The first sign of a tornado may be a strong whirlwind of dust near the ground, often in conjunction with the appearance of a short funnel extending from the storm cloud above. The tornado is in fact made visible by condensation of water droplets in the funnel wall or by dust and debris it sucks up. As the funnel becomes better organized, it descends further from the cloud base, sometimes touching the ground as a tornado. Tornadoes commonly move forward at 20 to 30 miles per hour, but can travel at speeds greater than 70 miles per hour. They often skip along in short hops, sporadically touching down for say a couple minutes or so along an intermittent path of destruction. The average tornado is on the ground for about four and a half miles with a path width of about a tenth of a mile. Tornadoes can and do reach colossal proportions though, more than a mile wide and staying on the ground for hours. The monstrous Tri-State Twister, March 18th of 1925, lasted three and a half hours traveled a distance of 219 miles from Missouri, across Illinois, and into Indiana, and killed nearly 700 people. With a 100 to 200 mile per hour updraft associated with the tornado, boulders, trees, houses, trucks, and animals can be rocketed up into the storm for three miles or so. A twister that struck Broken Bow, Oklahoma, carried a motel sign some 30 miles before dropping it in neighboring Arkansas. Another twister brought devastation to Uliga, Oklahoma on April 26, 1991, destroying the high school and the town's fleet of school buses. Incredibly, the twister scattered 27 buses all over the school's campus and carried one bus and a suburban truck over a quarter of a mile before smashing them to earth again. A twister can reduce a whole forest to splinters in a matter of seconds or simply strip a tree bare of all its leaves. And this spectacular footage shot by a local sheriff in Pampa, Texas on June 8, 1995, you can actually see a total of three vehicles up in the air at the same time. These vehicles, two pickups and a van are tossed around like toys by this incredibly violent twister with winds estimated at 250 miles per hour. The vehicles are damaged almost beyond recognition. We'll see more video of this twister later in the program. Twisters produce more than just incredibly destructive winds. Lightning will generally accompany the storm cell that produces twisters and severe thunderstorms and is a constant threat to life and property. Though your chance of being struck by lightning has been estimated at 1 in 600,000, it still causes around 100 deaths in the United States annually, more than hurricanes and tornadoes combined. You don't even want to get close. The air near a lightning strike is heated to 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit, hotter than the surface of the sun. This, of course, causes many lightning fires, especially in the western United States and Alaska. Lightning-induced fires cause several hundred million dollars in damage and the loss of two million acres of forest each year. Storms that produce twisters also frequently produce large hail. In fact, the appearance of large hail is a good indicator of a possible tornado. Hailstones are formed when strong rising currents of air within the storm, called updrafts, carry water droplets to a height where freezing occurs. These ice particles fall, collect water on their surface, and then are carried upward again and refreeze. This cycle continues until they become too large to be supported by the updraft, and they fall to the ground. 
Large hailstones become deadly missiles, falling at speeds near 100 miles per hour. Hail frequently causes damage, especially when it reaches golf ball or baseball size. And softball size bombs have actually been reported, with the record reaching an incredible 6.9 inches in diameter. Annually, nearly one billion in property and crop damage can be attributed to hailstorms. Clusters are also frequently accompanied by torrential downpours with the potential of causing flash flooding. Flash floods are the number one weather-related killer with around 150 deaths recorded in the United States each year from people becoming trapped in automobiles at night. The worst tornado disaster in the world happened on April 26, 1989 in Satura, Bangladesh, with 1,300 people killed. The worst tornado in the United States history was the Tri-State Tornado of 1925. This tornado ranked first for the number of deaths, 695, first for the longest continuous track on the ground, 219 miles, first for duration on the ground, three and a half hours, first in the total area destroyed, 164 square miles, first for the size, at times more than a mile wide, and third in forward speed, reaching a maximum of 73 miles per hour while averaging 62 miles per hour along its path. The National Weather Service is perhaps the backbone of weather forecasting for the United States. Today the National Weather Service has 252 weather stations across the nation with a vast network of radar installations, weather satellites, and many other weather data gathering systems. Coupled with an army of highly trained meteorologists and support personnel, they're well suited to the task of providing 24-hour weather information, forecast, and perhaps most importantly, severe weather detection and warnings. We'll now go to the Tulsa office of the National Weather Service, which is in the middle of a major technological overhaul, making it a prototype for the next generation of weather stations. Don DeVore, meteorologist in charge, and meteorologist Steve Peltz will be our guides. A considerable amount of lives are now being saved uh, across the nation today because of the new technology. Uh, before, we didn't have the warning capabilities. Uh, the people didn't know what to do. So the Weather Service doing preparedness outreach uh, along with the warnings and really the people know what to do when a warning comes. This is the uh, WSR-88D. It's the uh, new Doppler radar system that's been installed during the early and mid-90s across the country. Um, and it's really revolutionized the way that we put out our storm warnings. It's a standard radar that most folks are, are used to seeing in one respect, the, the hot colors showing the more intense storms, the cool colors showing the lighter precipitation. But there is also the Doppler capability, which is much like law enforcement uh, traffic gun, where we can measure the movement of raindrops, hailstones, whatever in the atmosphere moving toward or away from the radar. And that helps us pick up wind patterns that lead to possible tornado formations. So what you see here in, on the left screen um, is the Doppler, uh, Doppler velocity from a storm back uh, in April of 95. This eventually resulted in a significant tornado that struck the community of OK, Oklahoma. Um, and it's a unique storm in that on the right side monitor, you see a lot of hot colors. You see a lot of reds, uh, but no real patterns that distinguish this storm here moving into western Muskogee County as the one that, was, that would eventually produce the tornado. The radar is good, but only a trained human near that storm can actually tell us that we do have a tornado and that it is on the ground. 